Well then. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, is this a green wall shirt I have on? Optic Gaming? What is this? Is this new? Oh my god. Is it oh. TP's an Optic? Is this it's new? Optic TP! Oh my Pog goodness! Pog champ. Wow. Oh my goodness. Welcome wow, wow, to Hard wow. Points. This is episode six. We have Jack Courage Dunlop joining us. You guys can see the topics at, at the top of the do screen there. Oh, he's look an attractive at that. Do that man. Again. Do that again. Dude. Oh. Yeah, do it. Ooh, ooh. You have good. the mature thing, right? When you come into the stream, it's got like mature audiences only. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We love that. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's get so, into this. Uh, we, yeah, we got a pretty good show. We got uh, Norn Arena to talk about. You know, the eight team tournament that just happened uh, a couple days ago. We have some two Ks. That'll be a bit shorter, just because uh, obviously in North America, eight of the best teams were at Norn Arena. And then we have pro point statings, and uh, it's getting pretty juicy, especially especially with some roster changes. Oh yeah, baby. Um, the bubble it. teams, evil geniuses, obviously top twenty at Dallas. Uh, yeesh! I mean, that was scary. Um, so yeesh we have a lot is to definitely talk the about. Right way to describe that too. Perfect. And uh, but first things first. Congrats to to Tyler Polchow. He's in Optic Gaming. Uh, hey, Coach Optic. Thanks, pals. That's it. Everybody give him some love. Appreciate uh, that. That announcement was today. Yeah, if you missed it, go watch Vision. Uh, I announced that I'm now the coach of Optic Gaming. Uh, Going to help them with, with their recent struggles, not being able to beat TK or, or Splice <laughs> at Dallas. So hopefully we can uh, figure things out. And just I'm just going to be the best resource to them as possible. But to, it's enough about me. This hard points, we, you know, we're, we're talking about competitive Call of Duty. That's what matters here, right? Okay. It's a, I think it's a big deal that I'm a, I'm a coach now. I think that's big news. <laughs> I think it's a big deal. <laughs> but let, let's, let's stay on topic here, and the topic okay. is hard points, okay? Uh, all right. Well, well, the coach is covering hard points, so we're, right. we're here. We're, we're ready. Time we're to ready scroll, boys. Now. Scroll down the list. What's up <laughs> yeah. Next? Let's so, start. Uh, first things first, Northern Arena. Eight teams, Luminosity, Next Threat. NV, Echo, Fox, E United, Enigma 6, Phase, and Ground Zero. Uh, yes, we'll just start with the first round of matches. Nothing too surprising. I mean, Luminosity beats Next Threat 3-1. to one. Next Threat, are they the real deal? Uh, Envy goes to Game 5 with Echo Fox. If you're an Envy fan, I'm going to tell you what, you should be a little bit nervous because not the best results so far. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not what we were thinking coming into this year. E United handling business against a, a new E6. We can touch on that. And then uh, a, a bit of a surprising one. Ground zero, 3-0's three, three phase in that first round. But uh, I guess the first things first, let's talk about Luminosity. Back to their ways, uh, winning the event. Um, after a really what we consider poor 7th, 8th finish, um, I think going into Dallas, I think we all, most of us had them like T3, at least T4, uh, but 7th to 8th. But those guys handled business this past weekend. For sure. Just uh, going into this tournament, I, I assumed LG was going to bounce back. Uh, I feel like they are one of the top teams in the game. The fact that they weren't sort of in those last couple of matches at Dallas was very, very surprising to me. But the, they handled business, business, like you said. Octane went back to that MVP MVP form as an AR player, which is really cool to see, in my opinion. But I thought the whole tournament went really well. We got to see a lot more of these uh, individual teams on land. Who's being able to clutch up uh, in specific next threat is, has been going absolutely huge lately and actually making a lot of improvement. So it's cool to see those boys really stepping it up and getting some uh, you know high tier wins under their belt. A lot of game fives for them, but they're getting through. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought it was super interesting to have an event where you don't have you know optic splice or, or TK at. Just kind of let the other teams go ahead and fight it on out. See who's really, you know, the top tier. Who's kind of right on that bubble as we talk about. One big thing I know we're going to get into is is the pro point matchups. Yeah. So that was what I was really interested in seeing. Um, I must say I wasn't surprised to see the two teams in the grand finals that we did see. I think those were pretty pretty easy to uh, call from the start. Yeah. Um, while yes, you know, we saw Phase do well at, at Dallas. I I was unsure if Replays was going to be able to keep up that same level of of kind of play he had at that event and replay said after uh the montreal event that he didn't play up to his standard so we'll see how he bounces back for nola but mm -hmm. uh lg lg are are a scary team as we expected when they formed um and for them to win this event it's like okay i feel like they did what they were supposed to do uh, especially after losing dallas it's good yeah, confidence. absolutely mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it was right i mean i think like dallas was just surprising like Obviously, the event was put into two days. There wasn't many breaks, and what they just lost 
uh, a couple of games in a row. And just like that, you're out of the tournament. I mean, yep. we talk about it on broadcast a lot of times. Like These guys will survive the winner's bracket or, or, or pool play. They'll get in a winner's one, and then they'll just lose two matches, and you're all of a sudden out of the tournament. So I think that was the big thing for Luminosity. It was just they had to bounce back. They made some adjustments. But the guy I want to talk about, obviously, is Octane. I mean, he was sort of the, the MVP of, of this event. Overall, he has a 1.41, Yeesh. a 1.92 S&D KD, which I think was huge for them because yeah. he had an incredible game five in the finals versus United. Um, you know, 1.13 CTF, 1.45 hard point. I mean, the guy was really just untouchable this event. It's really fun to watch overall, especially, you know, going into the last couple of, of series. Octane's one of those players where when he – wants to win a tournament he can almost single-handedly put the team on his back the fact he was able to do it on maps like gibraltar as well was very very impressive uh just basically taking over the map getting streaks and snowballing their way to victory it looked like it, a, a classic lg performance to be honest it, if i'm trying to learn something about call of duty right now in an ar player i mean i i think i'm going to watch slasher and octane so far from what they're doing in call of duty world war ii they just look like they're meant to excel in their roles um mm-hmm. Obviously, I think that's also at least a little bit of a testament to the performances they have around them. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more of the strengths on LG than we saw from Envy. Uh, I, I feel like, again, Envy, we, we thought they were going to have a little bit of a slow start to this year. I think that this is an event, though, that I would have liked to have seen more from them on. And I know we'll probably talk about all sorts of things uh, in this. But with Octane putting up those numbers, obviously 1.41 is a little bit high. But... The guy had a 1.25 at, at Dallas as well, right? I mean, you think you take out some of those top, top echelon teams and his stats go up a little bit more, you expect him to kind of fluctuate between that 1.25 to 1.35, which, you know, in the peak of all time for, like, the, let's say formal and IW, that's kind of where he was. So if Octane keeps these numbers up, that's a huge, huge boost for LG. Yeah, and the thing to me is, right, so if you go through their back bracket run, they 3-1 next threat, they 3-0 Envy. Obviously, you have an Octane Slasher battle right there. Like, that's, you know, what you just talked about, Jack, was yeah. two of the best assault rifle players. But I think just the team uh, of Luminosity is just better than Envy right now. And then is when you get to E-United, right? They 3-0 Envy, then you get to winners, finals, and finals. And a huge discussion, especially last year, was, all right, you have Formal, you have Octane, you have Clay, you have you know guys like Mad Cat and, and Zero. Now when you talk about an Illuminosity E United match, matchup, you don't talk about Clayster in the AR role, right? Like that that isn't there right now. Instead, yeah. you're looking at Arcities. And it just seems that I don't know what it is, but I know E United play them very well. It obviously went to a game five, but it Octane just seems super comfortable on so many maps because so the fact of the matter is, he's not going up against Clayster. Yeah, for sure. The one thing that I actually did like to see was United's London Docks hardpoint, for example. Clay was pulling out that AR more, and Silly was taking that second sub sort of role. That's, that just needed to be a thing from the start, in my opinion. Yeah. But like we said, we brought it up a lot of times on hard, point, hard, hard points already, where United's going to struggle on those maps where Clay is pulling out that third sub. And that's not a, a hit to Clayster's play with a sub whatsoever. I just feel like when, when you talk about the best ARs of all time in Call of Duty, Clay's on the list, and he's high up on that list. I just feel like he he brings that different level of map control that honestly you might not be getting for, from our cities at times. And again, this might sound like I'm, you know, yeah, bringing down our cities play a little bit. I think the guy's been fantastic, but it's just a different style of play that I feel like they're still trying to work out. And, you know, they, they did do well at this tournament, but they still, it, it's apparent at times when they start to struggle. That, that That's the key for me as well. Is we're seeing this with a few teams that, Right now, they're just trying things out. Some roles are a little bit different than than they're used to. And you could look back in years past and go, like, okay, well, once they changed that up, it made a huge difference. You know, once this was something that was switched. Like right now, again, we, the hot topic, two of these six, is the whole general running a sub versus an AR. You know, yeah. has that paid off? Whatever, whatever. Again, we'll get into that. Um, but this is just one of those examples. I think the thing, though, that's that, that everyone needs to keep in mind is compared to years past, you don't have the time to – be doing these things and not making very fast changes because of how sure. quick we get to the land league, right? We have our two Ks. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Montreal event, we have two events, and then we're there. You know, the land league is now starting in, what, late January instead of what was April last year. Uh, mm-hmm. And that makes a major difference. That's three, four months of development and meta and making team changes. That's why for some people, like, with the E6 change, it's like they had one event, they immediately changed for Montreal. 
there's pros and cons to it, but you got to kind of move quick with how little time there is to, 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 to show improvements. Absolutely. But uh, obviously, Luminosity just handled business, played extreme, extremely well. I think Slacked was also like the secondary player. We haven't given much love to, to Jerry these these past couple uh, of shows, but he yeah. obviously had a, a great performance at Montreal. Um, again, this is sort of Octane's duo the past couple of years. And then John and Cap, you know what you're going to get out of those guys. I mean, those guys know how to win. But overall, it just seemed like Luminosity, they, they were handling business. They knew... If they didn't come out of this event with a win, I think they probably would have thought there's issues at, at hand that they would have had to fix. Um, totally. Because I, I, I think you even saw in sort of how much they celebrated the win. It was just kind of like we got stuff done. Yeah. Uh, business as usual. Thanks for the free cash. We're out of here. Totally. And, yeah. and that's that, and that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I mentioned earlier. It's like, yes, did they not have the best performance at finish at Dallas? Absolutely. But still mm-hmm. coming into this event, it, it's almost like the Optic Gaming complex where it's like you know it, right now tk do, do look exceptional but still for as long as that is a roster of four they've got to be damn near close to being your event favorites if not your event favorites going in yeah so uh congrats luminosity moving on though let's talk about the second place team e united so you have a second place here you have a fifth sixth at dallas we started to touch on it from what you guys have seen from all adjustments can they win an event this year do you think this roster can still do it because last year I, I think if that winner's final or, or winner's semi goes differently at, at COD Champs, it will forever haunt yeah. them versus Envy. Sure. And they get into the final or you, and you see like in the United versus Optic, I think things should have got crazy at COD Champs. But it seems like there's certain issues and when things go bad, it goes really bad. What do you think needs to change for the C United roster? Uh, honestly, with the way that the meta is right now, I I don't think they, they'll win an event. I, I think the biggest thing that would need to change for them, and I don't know, this is just me just completely making a guess, but if the if the me, the weapon meta changes, and what I mean by that is uh, if the FG42 is changed uh, you know, at all, if a different weapon comes into play later in the year, because it's Call of Duty, changes do happen with the weapons. You never know what's going to go down. But I just feel like with the way things are currently plated, I, I don't think so. I don't think they have that extra push. Uh, I don't think Pristini, he, he's kind of going, he's so streaky as the sub player on that team. Mm-hmm. He has those games where it completely takes over. We saw it on a specific map on St. Marie at Northern Arena where the guy was just yeah. completely shredding, pre-firing everything, just playing extremely fast. And you just aren't getting that game, those games from him so often. I feel like he doesn't have a lot of, you know, he doesn't have another fast player with him. It's simple as that. And I feel like it creates a, a lot of issues for them at time where he either has to play slower than he wants to or when he does want to play fast, he doesn't have someone to follow him up. Thoughts? Jack? Jack? Disagree? No, sorry. Uh, uh, United, it's tough for me to just call can they win an event or not because, to be honest, even go – like. I would have said no to TK winning an event prior to TK going into yeah. that. Into Fair. So, uh, you know, if they show up and I, I think the, the, you hit a good kind of point right there, Tyler, is like right now it almost feels like you just know what you're going to get from a United yeah. uh, when they go into a map. Whereas with, with TK, when I saw them, you know, win that event, it was like you could just tell these guys had tricks up their sleeves where if there was a game mode that they weren't comfortable in, they had something to make sure that they had almost like an out. Where it's like right now, it's linear gameplay from United. Like, okay, you know Proceedings going to be running around like this. You know you're going to have Arsenies slower paced. You know you're going to have Silly doing that. And, and I think it really shows on some maps where they just get absolutely smoked. Um, the one that stands out, obviously, was the kind of the Gibraltar hard point where Proceedings had like a 9-30 and 30 performance or something like that. And you're right. like, like, like it, I mean, I never played pro. But is that something where like mid-map you're like, guys, I need to do something different? Or are you just like doing what you should normally do and just getting destroyed? And you just are like, we'll figure it out after. Yeah. Like, I, it, it, it's one of those things where I think sometimes you get in this such a rhythm of like sprinting around that. And it's that mindset that, okay, I have a submachine gun. I have to do this. Yeah. Right. Like I have to get into the hill. I have to push out cuts. And sometimes as selfish as that may be. And I, I think Tyler can speak to this because he was that submachine guy his whole career where it's better to just prone in a corner and slow the game down for yep. yourself and, and try to get back into that that rhythm that that you're trying to reach because again I, I just think that I, I went through it as a player when you pull have a sub out 
There's just, all right, I have to get to the hill. It's my job. I'm the objective player. It's on me. And I think a lot of the times he can get into that mindset and, and not play selfish. He plays a little bit too selfless, if anything. 100%. And I can speak to this just from years of and years of experience of boots on the ground gameplay, specifically like online, using a sub. There needs to be those times, Joe, you said it, where you just, you, you have to reset your tempo, uh, especially in a game like this where your sub, you know, if you're in a good spot, you're going to win the gunfight 99% of the time because you're probably shooting against an FG, things like that. But when you're getting pinned down, especially on a map like Gibraltar, for example, you need to reset your tempo, slow down, limit your interactions as much as, much as possible until you get that sort of groove again. And we see the teams that are able to do that so well and so consistently are the teams that have some of the best sub player in the games. And right now, that's TK and that's Splice. You never see their, their sub players having a real dramatically bad game. They're, they're going to go you know negative at times. There's times where you just get pinned down, you get streaked out, but things can snowball out of control very quickly. I feel like that's the reason United it does struggle at times they have yeah. looked good at hard points in specific but there's times where pristini's getting completely shut down and who's going to step up as that second fast player and pick up the tempo form again if he's having those games where he's going 10 and 25 who's going to be the second guy like silly can play a good sub but is he necessarily fast no clay can play a good sub but is he fat a fast player like pristini not even close so it's just he like, tries to be he times, tries to right? be yeah but, yeah but when you watch pristini play the, the guy flies he plays on a high sensitivity and he it, like it's like a it's like watching a jerd like not many mm. people can play that fast sort of style and when that player is getting shut down the tempo of the entire team is way different simple i do i do want to say though i don't think while we are talking a lot about united i don't, I don't think they're like in panic mode oh no, no, no or no, anything no. like that right now um like you look at their losses and what they had. I mean, you're just kind of looking at Dallas, and, and they still they still finish in their pool well. They still obviously have some tough matches in, in winners bracket. They beat LG three one. They then you know lose to, in game five to TK. This team is in, in panic mode. It's just right now they're just they're right on that bubble of being a top three team. Totally. How do they now push into that bubble and beat the little likes of TK? You know, uh, yeah. uh, Optic and and Splice say moving forward at an event. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like, the, I mean, they get a second here, fifth, sixth at Dallas. They're right there. Yeah. But from the things that I've seen, it, it kind of worries me that I don't see them. It, it's going to be very tough for them. They're, there's going to have to be a lot of adjustments for them to get into that T3 sort of discussion. I mean, there hasn't been a, a game where I've watched them. I, I mean, maybe early on in, in pool play at Dallas when they like BDG, I was like, holy, sh- like, holy moly, these guys are – are a step ahead yeah. but when they get into those tougher games it just seems they're just a bit outmatched right now um again we're i, I think we're all huge fans of united we we've, we we want to see them do well uh, especially the twins when the twins are playing well this team is very tough to beat mm-hmm. but uh it, it'll be very interesting to see how how united makes adjustments especially for new orleans and we they have that cadet team i expect their search and destroy to, to continue to to play very very well yeah all right that's it on United. Third place at Northern Arena was FaZe. Um, I think the thing with FaZe is, again, they go on a loser's run. Uh, they they lose early on. They get 3-0'd by ground zero, which I think was a surprise to a lot of people, definitely me. Um, but then they they beat E6 3-1. They beat Envy 3-1. They beat Next Threat. But then they eventually fall to E United. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys watched it all, but... Yeah. You know what? What was? Why do they keep losing early on in these tournaments? Because I, it's it's so tough to do. This really looked like a case of just first match of the day. They got smoked by GZ. I think it was simple as that. When you're used mm-hmm. to you know on that team, for example, the reason that they were so consistent at Dallas is they had replays carrying a lot of the load on the AR department in that first yep. series where they got destroyed by GZ. Reap had a terrible series. The guy was just getting smoked. Free smoke. And, and the fact that <laughs> the the fact that he wasn't able to be that dominant AR holding map position for them makes life for the sub player twenty times harder. The game probably just they had no way to slow it down into their favor, and Reaper yeah. probably admitted he just had a really tough series. I, I just thought it showed a lot of composure from them that they're able to make another loser bracket run, get a huge mm-hmm. win over over a team like Envy, and then carry it over and get the three one versus like a cruising next threat. The, it shows consistency. And when you have consistency like that in the loser bracket, I feel like they were uh, they will potentially put it together to actually have a winner bracket run to see how far they can actually push to get, you know, an even better placing at a tournament. 
Yeah, I, uh, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, the weird thing, too, is like this phase team at Dallas, right? We, we talk about the loser's bracket run they have to make. They're in the group of death there. So it's like mm. they finish two and two and they drop down. They beat EG and Ghost. So you expect them to do that. And they lose the Splice and United like you'd expect. Uh, and then they go in that loser's bracket run there. And kind of looking at it, it's like they beat Unilad. They beat Red. They beat Envy. They beat United. And then they lose to Splice, who obviously went on to the grand final. Um, and, and at this event, too, it's like... I know some people are saying Replays was sick this weekend. And I'm sure he was. And, and he was, again, his own biggest critic. Uh but we've said this with other 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 guys. It's like that was probably replays at Dallas. I mean, that's got to be up there for one of his best events ever, right? Oh and, yeah, with, oh, with for the sure. numbers he put up. Mm-hmm. And this is not a knock on him at all. I mean, the guy's a world champion for a reason. But it just comes down to they get that event. They go nine and zero in CTF. If he doesn't put up as spectacular of numbers as he does there, does Faze get top four? You know, do, is is that a thing where they they drop in the top eight, top twelve, and it's like that's the event. It, that's what I'm wondering for Nola. Nola is going to be the big, the big thing for me for Phase for the future. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, they've already proved that they can hang, right? The big worries of is, is if the Priestess switch was okay, you know, okay, we're seeing that there's some potential there. Are they going to crack through now? And, and again, they're right, they're a bubble team for me uh, with the United right now. Yeah. Can they beat Splice? Can, do do we think right now? And I guess I'll throw this to you guys. Can their submachine gun presence match that of Splice and TK and? You know, optic. If if you throw them into the loop as well, it's like, I I don't know. It's weird to say because I mean, what three years ago I would tell you absolutely yes. Yeah. Like yeah. there's no reason, but I and I've been a, you know, a big person on saying that, Zuma and attach, can be the best sub. <laughs> what what is going on now, Jack? Sorry, I Ed, Bert's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I I think that th- that duo can be. The, the best submachine gun duo in the world. And they have been at times. It's been a long time since we've seen that. Um, but it, it really does play on them. I mean, it, it's tough to say right now. They, they can't. They, they don't, you know, they don't beat those teams consistently enough. I haven't seen a Zuma AW performance where I'm like, holy moly, yep. this is incredible. Or, or even attach early on in Black Ops 3. Um, it, it's tough to say, but yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, I don't think they can beat those teams without those two performing at, at a world-class level. Yeah, I, I think... I honestly think their average placing is going to go down if this roster sticks as the year goes on. I, I kind of agree with Jack. I, I, like, do, do I think replays and pre-star are consistently going to have those crazy good KDs? Ah. I don't know. I mean, they've done it multiple times now. They've had good loser bracket runs, and this is probably going to make some people angry because we've got some proven results. But you have one good event, and you have one bad event with your AR. That's already scary going into NOLA. Like, what what if it happens again? Loser bracket runs are so scary. They they don't seem to do well early on in tournaments. Uh, like, it, obviously, we saw it at Northern Arena. The, the fact that, like, GZ, here's my point. GZ's a team that shouldn't touch FaZe, in my opinion, for how consistent yeah. FaZe has looked. So that's the series that scares me so much. You go into early into a tournament, you get smoked by a lesser team. Let's just be honest and say it like that. That that scares me for the future. Well, and it does it scare you too. Like it seems like E United can handle them pretty well. Yeah. And E United's a team who, again, we just talked on, they struggle versus teams like Team Caliber, Splice, and Optic. I mean, if FaZe can't put up a better matchup or a better fight versus those teams, it's they're going to be in that sort of 6 through 12 range, I, I agree, like the, the entire yeah. year. Uh, one, one last thing I want to add before we move on to another team discussion is the fact that FaZe can remain so consistent is their mm-hmm. CTF, that swing map. We've talked about it for years and years and years. You can reset yeah. your tempo in the series. It's like that perfect balance between hardpoint and S&D in terms of you know getting a, a rhythm going in terms of kills, but it's still slow enough where you can like play a good team game. So I feel like that the fact that their CTF is so damn consistent is yes. going to be the reason why they are hovering in that top six range consistently. All right, so FaZe, they get third. They do pretty darn well. Again, they just lost to, to United, ground zero early on. The next team I want to discuss about is Envy. I'm, are, are I'm you fired okay? up on this one, Joe. Okay, All right. you're fired up. On this one. Take it, Jack. Okay. Because I was so excited for the prodigal son, Hook, to return to COD. I mean, 
you guys know. I mean, I worshipped him like he was my own child. I, I think we all did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited, right? Right now, we've now seen this NB team compete at two events. Have we seen an impressive series victory out of NB yet? Has there been a series victory from NB in these two events where you went, that was huge? I just looked at everything and I can say no. Nope. Right yeah. now, there is a single series that they have won that I've been like, damn, that is a – that." and I guess I'll leave it to the chat too to give their thoughts because right now, I don't think NB has won a series that, that has surprised me. They've just like beat teams that I, I hope that they beat and then they just fall to the teams that they should be giving a better run to. L- right, looking I'm- at everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. I'm going to give you four stats out loud. Ready? This okay. is from Montreal. All uh, right. This is on COD Gamepedia. So it, it might it, they might not have all the maps, but even if it's just a few, listen to this. Slasher, 1.27 overall. Oh. Ready? Classic, 0.94. Temp, 0.93. Hook, 0.91. I mean, to me, that's just the, the story of the team. And, and I know a lot of people actually have, have talked to me about this. They're losing hard points and out slaying teams. Yep. So there is an obvious issue here. The biggest thing to me, I'm still going to give Temp and Hook some time to recover, some time to, to get into the swing of things, right? I mean, it's it's December 20th. Like, we're six weeks into this game. Yeah, it's two events, but it is what it is. I, I'll give them until Pro League. To me, the biggest change has to be Classic. I, I love Nikki D., but when you look at him last year compared to this year, he is the difference maker from that Luminosity lineup when they were winning to this NB team now and, and where they struggle. Him, he he plays too vital of a role with a submachine gun to where he, to me, is the standout player of why they're, they're struggling as much as they are. Completely agree. And it starts as this year goes on. It's eventually going to start the conversation, at least in my eyes, is is Classic a jetpacker? We're, we're going to start having those conversations. We go back to years back in Boots on the Ground, and Classic was a good player, but was he as as good of a player as he was in jetpacks? Not even close, in my opinion, like from my experience playing against him and you know practicing against him, things like that. Whereas in Black Ops 3 and IW, the guy was insane. Absolutely insane. One of the top pros in the game. So it... We're, we still need to give this roster time, obviously. We need to give these players time. But mm-hmm. if Nola goes by and he has another .91 or what, .94, whatever it was, like, uh-oh, yeah, and, that, that's, and Dallas, that's scary. Dallas has a .88. Dallas is a .88, and that's with seven matches, right? So, I mean, obviously the .91 is two or three games, but at Dallas you have even more testament. Again, this was a player last year – has like you know ones and up all the way up to like I, I remember discussing at like pro league stage what was it two when they came in for their their regular week matches and he had like the best weekend we've ever seen him and he had like a one point two with an E rad yeah and that is the biggest drop off to me for this team and this is another topic that we haven't really talked about too much but a lot of people before this game came out was like oh. Pro COD pros or COD pros, all people are going to be on the same level going back to boots on the ground. Well, huh, what's happened here? Has some player, has some of these pro players gone back to their average level? Uh-huh. So far. So we'll see if that trend's going to continue throughout yeah. the rest of the year. It's a little bit early to say, so I might be wrong on that. I hope I'm wrong. But some players are at the t- top tier of the jetpack scene on the pro scene. And I've dropped back a little bit. Jack, you're smirking. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Listen, Tyler, I mean, I was someone who was verbally abused as being a jetpacker. And then I got <laughs> a boost and still showed I had what it takes, right? The 1.07 land KD, 4 and 1 map uh, count, 1 match is. record. There's the plug. Uh, you know it was coming at some point. Can <laughs> I have that, please? Thanks. I love it. Okay, this day's not all about you, Mr. <laughs> Coach TV. <laughs> uh, but again, uh, this could go down for me. For an organization as big as Envy, as one, if this continues on this trend, right, and this year goes on, as one of the biggest roster mistakes ever. Yeah. It, 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 obviously, they 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 took a they took a chance, but this could be one of those things where this could be one of the biggest roster mistakes ever, where you threw think, away previous world champions. I think you you're got right. Back to the grand finals of a COD champs. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like Envy went and bombed out at, at IW champs. 
They were in, they, they they went uh-huh. from the winners bracket into the grand finals. They had the ultimate regain as a roster, and then they threw yeah, it all I mean, away. Yeah, stage two second place. I mean, champ second place. Yeah, both times they got beaten two best of fives. But I mean, if you're the second best team in the world, I'll you, take that. You take I'm that. I'm okay with it. I'll yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think yeah, envy. Uh, I'm a little worried about them right now. I hope they continue to improve it for New Orleans. One thing I'm going to write down for our Q and A later for the last part is uh, how successful would the old NV roster be? I saw someone ask that in the chat, so it's I'm going to write that down for later. Yeah, it's a good topic. I, I think we could talk on that a, a, a good amount. Um, these these next teams, uh, probably the, the next team at Northern Arena I want to talk about the most, probably uh, next threat. Um, what is the potential of this team? I mean, they, they're they show up, so Rise, I, I think they had visa issues. There were some teams who had visa issues. So next time the call was Doug Sensor Martin picks up the phone, says, I got a passport for each bicep. I'll be there. And this guy <laughs> shows up. That was good. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they, they're they in the running again. Um, they beat some solid teams. They obviously lose round one to Luminosity 3-1, but I think they ended up winning game one hard points. So I think Methods played really well, but – they beat Echo Fox in a game five. They beat Ground Zero in a game five, but they lose the face. How you know? What are your guys' thoughts on this team so far? I, I like. I, go ahead, Jack. I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm I'm excited for a team like Next Threat to be in. First off, just like Phase, I, I owe Center an apology as well. Prior to that, <laughs> prior after that first event, you know, at least he he came in and made a run and. Well, okay, maybe his stats were the least impressive on his team. He at least built something and gave it a, and gave it a go. We have seen many other people come back from retirement or breaks and do much, much worse than Sensor has done now For with sure. this next threat team. Uh, so that's, get that out of the way. Again, I'm excited for this team. I think that they are a team right now that that has potential. I do see them making it into the pro league. Uh, yeah. If I think for me. If they stick together and continue to improve and continue to put the yep. time in, it's so weird to say that I think a blessing it is a blessing was Yannette went and filmed that movie out in Europe for six <laughs> weeks, and all Sensor had was the gym, G Fuel, and some damn Call of Duty. Yep. So he was grinding and he was playing. And every eight series I saw, Sensor was in it. I was seeing him in four more attorneys. I was seeing him in this. So he put his time in, and so did the rest of the boys. But now where other teams think make panic changes, I think where next step will succeed is by just improving, by just sticking together and improving. They don't make panic changes. I think they're going to be one of those teams that, you know what, they make it on through by sticking together, holding arm in arm and being best friends. I love it, man. I'm glad like one of these rosters that was thrown together is working out. Next Threat obviously not having a good start to the year, but the fact that they were able to put this roster together and get some very fast improvements was so impressive in itself. And in my opinion, I think they must be practicing really well because when you go from event to event, granted they're in a short span of time, but you can show that they're making improvements on, on Hardpoint in specific. They're taking maps off some of these top teams. And most importantly, they're showing that they belong on land. Online's a completely different argument. Uh, you know, Things happen online sometimes. But the fact that they're showing up on land, getting multiple big wins in clutch scenarios, taking consistent game fives versus some of these top teams that I personally didn't think that they were going to beat is really huge. And again, we talked about methods a lot at Dallas. He, he was doing it again at, at Northern Arena, man. The, the guy's well, been uh, the most consistent slayer on the team. The KD forum are, are unbelievable. He's taking over hard points. Just watching him play, he, he's making smart plays along with getting a lot of kills just a great job from him well here's the thing to me too right like this nice uh, like doug and ricky were just throwing teammates out the window yeah like they were just like all right on to the next two didn't work the next two didn't work i i was super surprised that you know methods and naga actually said all right let's do this like they were on some solid rosters going into the year they didn't end up working out but they took a risk on this entire roster and it's proving so far i i mean you sort of hit the nail on the head I'm, I'm going to read out the Northern Arena stats. So Ricky has a .98, Methods a 1.3, Nagafin a .78, and oh, wow. Sensor a .9. Naga! Naga. Now, again, Naga I don't know if Kaji dude. and Pedia, that they could clarify that that's all the games. I'm not <laughs> too sure. Did you just say .78? Wow. <laughs> yes. I thought Naga did better. Well, that that was at Northern Arena. Um, yeah. At, what was the Dallas at, stats? 1.02 at Dallas. Ricky was a 1.07. Methods was a 1.1. Sensor a 0.78. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I'm all, all, all kidding aside. Uh, 
I heard I heard some stuff before this team was formed in regards to kind of how it all came to. Two matches. And I think, okay. I think this is basically four players mm. that you know the two different pairs that were unhappy with their surroundings. Joe, you brought up a great point where it was like Ricky and and Sensor were just kind of going through and churning people through. And on the other side, they played a couple two Ks. They had a couple changes, and then they were just like, you know what? Both these guys like we have one last chance to make a change. Let's just do this, and they kind of formed together like some Transformers type stuff. <laughs> and this is the team that they came out with. Um, the, again, take this all with a grain of salt, but but I, I'm still looking for for these victories where I'm like, this team is the real deal. Where I'm like, yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think though the roster changes help them a lot. I think early yeah. on in the game, when you have people, you're kind of cycling through. Everybody you bring in is bringing something new to the team. So when Doug and Ricky decided to team with Methods and Nogfin, they've obviously been through some some teammates already. They have different ideas on how they should play, and it seems to be working out pretty well. They have so many idea, different ideas. It could be from you know their teammates that they were playing 2Ks in, whatever it is. But it's worked out pretty well. Um, I guess the next question is, because listen, man, it scares me. Do these guys, this is a team I can see choking a pro league spot, right? Like at New Orleans, they're just having a bad Friday. Pool play, wow. they go like 0-4 or something, 0-3. Does this team throw it away, or do you see them making it? Hmm. Don't, don't even put that in thought in my head. You got, I got to ask the tough questions. I mean... I think they're going to do it. I think yeah. they're going to do it. I... I don't think Naga's going to be that .78 guy. I think he's going to be hovering right around a 1, same with the rest of the players on the roster. I think Doug, Doug's one of those players where he can just have those events, and Doug's traditionally been a player that clutches the hell up when he needs to. And oh. I feel like he's going to turn up when he needs to to qualify for Pro League, and Doug Sensor Martin is going to be there in Stage 1. I, I I I wanted to give some witty and crazy and funny answer to this, but then I just scrolled down and looked at the pro point standings, and I I just clenched. Yeah. Like they they are within what uh, one bad two K performance of Rise E Six Lightning Pandas E G and Ghost. Oh God! And that's for the tenth spot. That's yep. for the tenth spot, and then they have seven thousand points to get into seventh. Yeah. They are seven thousand points away from ninth, or six thousand points away from ninth, and. 8,000 points away from 16th. Yeah. That's horrifying. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. So, Kagi and Peter just added me at the chat. I guess Doug had a 1.31 versus face. So, oh, wow. Doug, can, when he when he plays with raw emotion, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like he could play well. I think just with all the things that has happened through the, with this team, the amount they've been through, I, I got a feeling they're going to clutch up. I just I think Methods is going to – is just gonna do methods things on that Friday. I could even see them getting out like winners one and securing it. I I'm a big let's, fan. Uh, I'm gonna transition this to like let's. Look, I have the pro point standings up on the screen right now. So okay, right above them, next threat versus GZ. Who do you think takes that matchup? I'm taking next threat. Both of you, just real quick, pick one. Ooh. Next threat, Jack. Round zero, baby. Okay, okay, okay. You move up the list again. Next threat versus Echo Fox. They just beat them three two at Northern. But what? granted, Echo Fox had a fill in. Jar. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking Echo Fox versus the next threat. Yeah, I am as well. I am as well. Here's then, the thing that scares me. It's not above them; it's below them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna do top yeah, two yeah. above them and top my, bottom two Let's below them. So then we go on, down to Rise. Next threat versus Rise. You guys take. I think I I think I go Rise. I think I take <laughs> next threat. No joke. Yeah. Yeah. Jack. Uh. I think I think I I think I take rise, and then we go down to E six. Uh, the roster change obviously going down. I don't know if that roster is going to stick or what the hell is going on with that. But next that versus E six, I take next third again. Yeah, I, I do as well. I think you should go two more. Go to the next two, two spots. Okay, down again. It's interesting. Yep, these last two. Okay, so then we got lightning pandas versus next mm. threat. That's a tough one for me. I take, I, next threat. I take next Lightning threat. Is, hasn't, hasn't Ch done chat, enough. join us. Put put your thoughts. And then we go down to EG. Next threat versus ah, EG. That's a scary one to me, dude. Yo, Pat, <laughs> I saw you in a stream, boy. 
Pat's choking a Naga fin for his own spot. <laughs> here. Why did you just turn into a dolphin? Because <laughs> I'm fucking hammed. I'm sorry, I cursed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're going to get demonetized on YouTube. Oh man, I, I think that that's the scary one to me because I, I think EG, they're going to probably be, they'll, they'll be an open bracket. They haven't performed well enough to where I see them like winning the next 2K. Well, basically, they're going to be an open. I think they know that. Yeah. The thing that's scary with EG is they're such a hot and cold team. If they run through open, thing is, that's the big question. Do they survive open? Yep. If they survive open, I actually see them qualifying for Pro League because I think they're going to have so many games under their belt. Yeah. Just what we saw with FaZe, just what we saw with Echo Fox. I think they take that momentum into Saturday and Sunday and they get in. So someone's got to choke. I'm not sure exactly who it is yet. But it also depends if they get out of open because I could see them losing too. So, ah, but so e back, back, to, back to the topic. We need to pick one. Next threat versus EG. If they played each other right now in a best of five on land, who wins? Jack, start. Uh, I'm, go I'm just going to say EG just because... <laughs> I, I, I strictly look just at Jack's I'm face more, right now. He's I'm like, more afraid, I'll be honest. So I'm picking EG because I'm more afraid of aches than I am sensor. Yeah, I, I just think it comes down to firepower to me. Yep. Just I, and that's where I just go EG. Um, I, I think that's obviously like even just spinning off the stats that I said. If next threat's gonna continue to win games versus the top teams, it's gonna be a grind to like game fives. I just don't know besides methods. If someone else can step up and, and slay the way that they need in, to win response. Who do I pick? Shoot. Dude, EGs just looked horrible. I don't know how I pick them. It looked good, right? Like Friday or Saturday pool play. Can, like, Joe, can you, can you pull up Dallas stats for EG? Yeah. You got that ready? Uh, I need. Let's let's go over this real quick before we move on. Okay, so you have Nameless a .87. Uh, AX01, Enable a 1.07, Apathy a 0.99. I, like, 0.87 is bad, but I don't think you could be like, all that's, right, dude, this yeah, guy. That's not that bad. Can, I, can uh, I quickly just cover something, too? Yeah. So I just want to cover EG's matches at, at, at Dallas really quick. Yeah, yeah just I think to, you should. So they finished 2-2 in their pool of death as well alongside FaZe with just a little bit of a worse map count. They lose their series to United 3-1. They beat Splice. Three to mm -hmm. two, they beat Ghost three to one, which basically beating Ghost at Dallas was like facing four spoons with guns. It was like yeah. nothing. So, okay. uh, and they lose three out of phase, and that was everything, right? So, they have their ups and downs in pools. The thing was, obviously, we know is that reverse sweep loss to MF. Yep. If EG don't choke that 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 game terribly, that series terribly. Then I honestly I expect them to move on and you know beat the likes of Epsilon and then they would go on and face Echo Fox after that, which at that point Echo Fox had played a five game series with MF. You could have probably gone either way, but But I think you finished it, Jack. Like if they beat Mind Fruit, they beat Epsilon, they're what, top twelve? Like they're 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 safe now for pro points. Like that's it. Like that was their Sunday morning and and they choked it. It just went away. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm super scared for E. G. because mm. They haven't clutched anything. They're a good team. Yeah. When they when they don't have pressure on them, they're slaying. They're doing fine. <laughs> they got the veteran leadership. They choke everything. They choke that hard point on London Docks to E United when they were sitting pretty. That should be a clean win for them at, at Dallas. They they mm. choked a, an easy series versus Mind Freak, and Mind Freak is in the what top twenty four range. In an mm -hmm. open bracket where they have to clutch best of threes, oh, that's scary as hell. They like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it is. It is like I. I think what is it like around five or six is like right around that that scary range for the open bracket, right? You play that when we have a normal schedule. You'll you'll play that Saturday morning. Eg will, and I, the the mornings obviously not too good to to eg. Thing to me is. I, I don't know. I, I I know Pat's in here. He probably is going to disagree with me. I would still love to see Pat run a sub more. Again, when I teamed with Nameless and we were pretty successful, he was running an AR. You just sort of play around him. Yeah. You let Ace and Apathy run around and, and slay things. But I'm sure they'll figure it out. But oh, it's New Orleans is going to be fun, man. There's going to be a lot of eyes on them. 
it's just weird. Like, I look at this roster, I'm like, oh, they should be fine in a map five scenario. But, yeah. like, right now, I'm just, I'd am i be so scared. And I feel like if you put this team in, like, a winner bracket round one, they're when they don't have as much pressure, they have a loss to work with. I wouldn't be surprised if they take a, a series versus one of these top teams. But it seems like, for whatever reason, when their back is against the wall... Uh, when things start going bad for them, they're getting 0-5 comeback on search. They're losing 120 point leads in hard point. Like a, it's happened. It, a, happen. a, it happened yeah. a lot. Like what the hell's wrong? That it's, and just it's scary. almost like, like when they talk about it and you you heard like all right, because you know a, a big critique was there's too many leaders. I almost wonder if just like they're almost like too mature about it. Like nobody's just yelling at one another. Like so, yeah. if someone's got to yell at someone, yell at someone. Like I, I, I want to hear I, their comms so bad. Yeah, I wish so, I could listen to comms. But yeah, we got a little off topic there. But yeah, that's sorry. Okay. Um, no, I loved it. That was a great conversation. Uh, so yeah, next threat. Um, they finished what fourth at, at uh, uh, Esports Arena. And the next teams we can just kind of skim over. Yeah. Um, and they missed six. They pick up Goddard and Pander. I like the move personally. I just don't <clears throat> know. Ah. Oh. I don't know if it if it was worth it because obviously the pro points that Bevels and Decimate had, I, I think they would honestly be in a pretty comfortable spot right now around like totally. nine or ten. Here, what do you guys think uh, of the move? I, they, I'm I'm being mean on this one. Okay, I'm being mean on this one. So you have a decent Dallas, right? Hmm. These guys are finally in a situation to make break their way into a pro scene on a new team. You take all that practice, your first land practice on boots. Yeah. You throw it away, and then you get crapped on again. And now you're like, uh oh, did we make a mistake? Yeah. That, like, you, so you take all those things you learned from Dallas, and you throw it away. What if they improved on several different things? They come to Northern Arena, and they get a fifth through six, or maybe a top four. It's all what ifs now. And, you, like, Joe, what are your thoughts? Like, t- land experience is the most important thing you can ever take away from something. And you have another event that means a lot in a short span, the next weekend. Yeah, I mean, that's just it. I, I think it was just a-, a bit too early. Like, again, I like the pickup of Goddard and Pander. They- they've had an experience. They've gotten through open brackets. We've been wondering when, when that sort of duo was going to sort of escalate to the next level, right? There's been a lot of eyes on them. Um I, I just think it, it was a weekend too early. Like if you had a Northern Arena with that same roster at Dallas, get seventh day. All right, make your change. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I think that land experience is is super vital. It's super important. Obviously, let's let's just look. Like they would have played the United, they probably would have lost that. Would that team have beaten Phase with Decimate and Bevels? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? I, yeah, who knows? But. My pro- my problem with it is like you put Pander and God RX into a, such a crappy position, right? Yeah. How are you going to do well against all these teams that have been together and playing the game for a while? You're thrown into a new roster and you're just kind of praying it goes well. So now it's like it, it creates this circle of doubt over this team, and that circle of doubt is over your two new players already. Lateral move. Lateral move. Okay, I for me, this change is going to end up doing little to no good, in my opinion. For for a team that went into the likes of Dallas and, you know, yes, they didn't have their greatest performance, whatever. They placed top 12 or whatever it was. I mean, uh, at least give the guys a, a chance for the second matchup. Um, I just, for the changes made, I don't care how good some of those guys are looking. One for Montreal, unless you literally add two of the top players in the game to that team, there's no way they're getting higher than 7th, 8th for me at that event. Yep. By making a change two days before to people that I don't think are going to show that much of an improvement right off the break, you knew they were getting 7th, 8th. This is a NOLA move. Yeah. This is this for me is like a E6 goes into NOLA, and if they're going to make pool play, I mean, if they're going to make the league, they're going to go top four. They're going to get like a top four and be like, we told you so, Yeah. but my heart is telling me they're making this move. They're going to place top 12 again, and it's going to be general looking for a fresh roster for stage two. Well, not even Jeff. What, dude, what about Dashy? Like, that dude should should be looking up. Like, yeah. Oh, I, oh my I'd say Lord. general because he's the, the – Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe, status up here for E6 from Dallas. I'm going to the bathroom really quick. To Northern Arena. Yeah, you're fine.
let's, uh, let's stats. Yep, stats from Dallas, and then stats from Northern. I'm actually super surprised by this. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Overall stats, Dallas is seven games played, point eight one for general, one point two eight for Dashy, sheesh, point eight one for Bevels, and a one for Decimate. Um, let me pull up player stats okay. for them general at northern arena 1.15 okay he turns it around very nice pander 0.75 got 0.85 dashy 1.05 i just feel so. ba- i feel bad for the t- like that makes yeah it sucks. That, ma- that makes yeah. pander and got rx look horrible but it's like if you look at the context it's like they didn't have a chance you're you're yeah, put, I, you're put into the situation where you're playing some of the best teams in the world and it's like it is totally a lateral move. And I, like I mean, it 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 was two of the best. It was Faze and the United. Like, like it, it does suck because man. again, they just got put on this roster. They got said, "All right, you're going to this event," and like, now a lot of people cool. have that sort of outlook on them. General gets a point three KD boost. Cool, you still got last. Yeah, is that worth it? It's a, it's a tough. That's a team that's going to be very interesting to watch. I mean, especially around New Orleans, where are they at? They're like eleventh now, right? With I think Rise took over number ten for them. Yeah. Uh, pro points wise, as E6 is now looking, you know, outside in. So we'll see how this pays off. That's they're another team that could is probably going to be in the open bracket unless they re-pick up that roster. I, I have no idea what's going to happen with Enigma 6. But. I just, I, I feel bad. I feel really bad for uh, for Decimate and Bevels because it's not like they had a horrific Dallas. No. And they get thrown to, like, you have another event so soon. And the, at, because it's within a week period, you try it again. And if it fails again and the same trends happen, that okay, I, I would understand a roster change at that point, right? Especially because Nola is so damn huge, but like, ah, I, it, the timing of it is is just really poor in my opinion, and I feel bad for the two players that got shafted because of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, another sort of note is who knows what this the old E six roster could have done, right? If they pick yeah. up, you keep Dashy, you have uh, Royalty and Proto. Who knows how? how oh yeah, that's, that's a good point too. Um, yeah, the next couple teams, Ground Zero. They're just like comfortable in the middle of the pack right now, right? Just sort of, sort of around that seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth range. They don't seem to be progressing uh, in getting better. I mean, I, I think obviously the three over phase was was a pretty big win, but besides that, I think it's sort of the same thing. Like where are their big wins at? Um, as soon as they got into the winners bracket at Dallas, they survived their pool. But I, what did they get double first round at Dallas, where they lost in winners they, run? They and lost then, to Splice and lost to Envy, I believe. Yeah. So again, where are their big wins? Um, I know Parasite had a had a slow event. Um, I don't really think there's much to go on there. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on Ground Zero at all? Ground Zero right now, they're not in the clear by any means in regards mm-hmm. to looking at pro points. Um, I think right now that they are the best of the teams that are figuring things out with these new players and. Uh, people returning and, and stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're, they're a team that you mentioned, you hit the nail on the head, Joe, is another team that where are their big wins? You know, they lost 3-0 to LG in their pool. They beat Vitality 3-2, to which, remember, that was down to the wire. That was like catching us off guard. Yeah. They beat Epsilon 3-1. to They beat Allegiance 3-1. to They then go to the, the winner's bracket. They get 3-0 swept by Splice, and they, get, they lose 3-2 to Envy of all teams, mm-hmm. who we were just kind of ripping on. Or earlier, um, th- they're a team right now that are like, it, 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 if they don't make pools, it would be like some Scooby Doo type shit where it was like we would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you, Naga fan and censor, like something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. like they're and they're like just it's like they somehow cheated the system and added ten thousand pro points and they're in eighth, but based yeah. off of what I've seen, their yeah. top eight and two case have really saved them. They're like Absolutely. four or five top eights, whatever yeah. they have. Even the top twelve of Dallas, they they survived the pool. I mean, yeah. and they lose to two good teams, um, so nothing much there. I, I just, I I would love to see these guys just improve. That's the biggest thing to me. I want to see them get better. I, I I still have pretty high hopes for this team. I don't see them winning this year, but I would love to see them at least get like five, six, maybe even a fourth this year. I I just don't think we will. Um, but I think, we'll see uh, if they make pro league. How how much they improve those weeks. 
I think like you guys are talking about like who's going to choke out of the top ten. Mm. That this is a team that that scares me, and I feel like the only time where they look very impressive. It's due to study taking over a map with the SMG. Studies looked very, very dominant at times, and that's sort of what we look for in a team, right? It's like what, who, number one, who's been their competition? Who have they beat, right? So that's looking pretty weak. And when they do win games, who's the? Do they look dominant? Ha- have like a dominant fashion over it, right? Has any other player on the team yet really like take over like Study has? Pharaoh's had a few good games here and there. S- same with Haggy, and then Blastwell's looked solid. But is it good enough? In your guys' opinion, from what you've seen Listen, on the individual level on the team, study study is a player that has like if there was a specialist for a person, right? Like the old games, so study weird. specialist. Study specialist would be in a game five, drop fifteen kills and have streaks by round <laughs> three because he yeah. does it like once an event, uh-huh. just like once an event. Like I remember he did it at Dallas. It just like it just like happens where he might be doing average in other game modes, and then a game five happens, he's dropped fourteen kills and he's getting hyped on Twitter like I'm back, baby, and it's like oh god, okay. It, yeah. That specialist comes with one tweet too. Um, so, uh, yeah, for me, it's just like, all right, you know, they've they've made it, they've made it here. Can they actually now convert? I mean, this is a team that went two and five in S and D at Dallas. Mm-hmm. Two and five. They yep. have Blastful and Pharaoh. Yep. If yeah. you put me on the team with Blastful and Pharaoh on an online S and D tourney, we could win at three v four. Yeah, I I think the big thing for them is right now they have like a. What from Rise or from E6? They have a nine thousand point lead uh, on pro points. There's one two K left that'll go towards, uh, well, two two Ks left uh, that'll go towards the overall pro point standings. I think that could potentially help them because again, like what you said, Jack, they had they were getting like top eights consistently online. So that could either hurt them or help them a lot. Um, we shall see what happens at New Orleans. The last team at Northern Arena was Echo Fox. There's not much to say. They they went with a fill in. Yeah. Um. They play with Goonjar, which I'm not too sure why. Like Goonjar over anyone else because Saints is a submachine gun player. But anyways, don't want to really go into the specifics with that. They almost make what they go to game five like twice or something. I I don't remember. They they play okay. Yeah. They went game five with Envy. Game five with Nice Threat. Potential was there for them to do something. Uh, the skills of that team's there, but it is what it's it all, is. Is all I want to say on the matter. It has been announced now that we have a an event overseas mm-hmm. this year. That is not going to be a little Northern Arena event. Yep. That is yeah. a global open. Facts. And if yeah. you're not going to have one of your players there, for whatever reason that they've had, you are going to have yourselves. You're gonna. It, 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 that's like just shooting yourself in a foot. Shooting yourself with yep. the foot. That's it. Simple yep. as that. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, guys. So it's one one more 2K for pool play uh, for those asking in chat and two for opens. But that second one will still count overall. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was Northern Arena. We basically covered all the teams, had some discussion. We can go into the 2Ks right now. Obviously, um, eight of the teams in North America weren't there. So there were some pretty odd results. Uh, but the finals was lit. I don't know if you guys watched last night. I did, bro. It, yeah, it, it, it was uh, it was a, a lot of fun to watch. Kenny, TK, uh, they handled business on the top side of the bracket. Uh, a lot of teams that you expect. Lightning Pandas, you have the quarterfinals. Bean Squad, I'm not too sure who that is. A BZ, Reader, Skiliosis, Supreme Agility actually got to a semifinals. Wow. Um, they beat Lightning Pandas, and they beat Ghost in Game 5. So... Ghost's woes yeah. continue. Ghost struggling. Wow. Um, on the bottom side of the bracket, Rise, uh, they beat some teams and they lost 3 0 to EG. So up and up for EG. Yep. Uh, Tyler, you're one who you're not aboard the Rise train just yet. I mean, they really haven't performed too well. Um, they're they're in the same sort of boat as as EG kind of yeah. for me. Like, who who have they beat? Who's uh, like have they been super yeah. impressive? No, I, no, not at all. So that is, that is uh, an interesting team um, to watch out for going to New Orleans. Uh, Optic Gaming handle business as usual, and then semifinals they beat EG three to one. How, do you know how close those games were, uh, Tyler? Or are you not too sure? I wasn't able to watch those ones. I think I think Aches tweeted they were close games, but then again, that's Aches tweeting, so that has as much legitimacy as n- yeah. n- n- nothing. There's literally no <laughs> that could be a complete lie. <laughs> so, so yeah, and then the, the finals, which I think we could probably talk about this the most. Uh, TK3O's Optic Gaming. 
And it's one of those things when you're winning, you're winning, right? Like things are going well. You're super confident going into matches. Yeah. Uh, they beat Optic on – you could probably tell me if I'm wrong, but what, two of their best respawns, London Docks Hardpoint and London Docks CTF? Yes. Tyler? Correct. Yeah. I didn't see the – obviously they had uh, – the the map covered up for i was just watching pictures just watching around count but yeah. uh tk won that uh but yeah i mean tk just looks comfortable right now obviously yeah, I think, uh, go ahead jack uh, I, I, the point i want to make on this is tk right now are just they're, they're an extremely likable team i mean they are gaining so many fans themselves. Forget about organization or whatever, just of these players because of how they've conducted themselves, how they've been performing so far. It's like this is a team that wins this this tournament, and like they don't take their foot off the gas pedal. These are guys that were hungry to win. We know how badly Chino's wanted to win for years. We know accuracy was traded around teams. It was always the last odd man out. Now they've got this young talent, and they're going into these series. It, it's they're a super fun team to watch. I was watching this London Dock CTF when Optic had like twice a two flag cap lead, I believe. And they not only go into overtime, but then in OT, Optic scores in 30 seconds. And I'm like this. I'm looking up what's game four, what's game four. Then they cap in 30 seconds against Optic of all teams. That's one push. But they still figure out a way to do it. They coordinate their stuns off the break. They're diving to the mid statue. These guys are a well-oiled machine right now. And... We know it's tougher to maintain when you're at the top because everyone's gunning from you. They're learning from you. But right now, TK, they, they, they are just – they're willing to do what it takes to win. They're not just going to say we're going to beat teams off gunfights. They're going to run certain classes. They're going to have these stuns on. They're going to use these nade spots. It's freaking awesome to watch. Uh, obviously, this is a biased topic for me now because I have a – <laughs> extra say i'm wearing an optic hey coach now. hey coach so uh, obviously now i'm going to limit certain things that i'm going to say about the optic lineup but regarding the series tk knows how good they are now they yeah. they are playing they're a well-oiled machine kenny goes wherever the hell he wants whenever the hell he wants to and pops a two-piece almost every single time the routes the timing and the confidence that kenny has right now is it's probably unmatched uh, as terms of SMG players go. Obviously, we can talk about Splice uh, being able to match him somewhat in that regard, yada, yada, yada. But on the NA side, that dude knows what the hell is going on and makes the sub role look yeah. masterful. Go ahead, Jack. Well, what I really like, too, about him is that we'll see other pe players who, you know, they use this hyper-aggression, and he's running the stun to help with that, too. Like, he'll pop it and then let him sprint more. What I love, too, with Kenny so far is, like, they've got this play style with him where – they just let him go and do what the hell he wants, and especially in hard point two when he has like five seconds a game in Hill and they just win because he's slaying everything. But what I love too is how he uses his stuns at times. He's he's very smart with it. There's times where his goal with a stun is to stun the person and challenge, but more times than not, he's stunning someone and then calling out to his AR where the guy stunned at, and then he's just letting his AR clean up the kill. Like I remember watching on the London docks, the amount of times he would throw a stun. And then his teammate would trade it instantly after because yeah. he, he he had no intention of going for the kill. He just knew he was the guy with that tactical. His teammates were the ones with the stickies, you know, trying to pin people out of head glitches. Mm -hmm. He would stun this guy. They would then trade the kill, and that would open up his lane. He's, like, giving his team the chance to do the dirty work for him instead of him having to sacrifice himself to do this dirty work to clear out his own lane. It's, it's awesome to watch. And then just speaking on the Optic side, too, from what I saw specifically in the respawns is Optic has – a lot of really bad tendencies and we talk about talent a lot in call of duty and optic has a lineup where they can play however the hell they want versus 97 percent of the converse, uh, competition and probably win no matter what because they're that good they now they're getting to the point where the competition is getting really tough at that top level and they play that three percent and they're they can't do whatever they want and at least these bad tendencies that don't really haven't ironed themselves out yet start to shine through they they are not trading gunfights very well. Their their patience is almost non-existent at times. They don't know how to slow the, stop the bleeding, slow the game down, post up in a heady, like controlling mid statue on on CTF for example to 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 conserve your two, two cap lead whatever it is. It's been multiple times that yeah. we we see the same mistakes shine through leading from Dallas and then over to the 2K and it, it's happening again and again. So I think it's, it's bad it's bad tendencies that need to be fixed and fixed quickly. It's it was phase in AW. It was United in 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 IW. You know they had 
lockups do they have their fair share of teams that they had that issue with um and, and now it's like tk in, in this game it's like well it, it, or splice too you had splice in as well it's like yeah they just can't they just can't get away with what they can get away with versus other teams simple as that and will they fix it i i think so again for as long as this is a roster of four we know they have the skill and teamwork to do it it's just again it's a learning curve and what sucks more this year than other years is or like last year for example is they had a four events or whatever it was prior to the land league to fix that here they have two realistically so they better do well at nola if they want that can they can they get number they can still get number one spot back yeah, they yeah. just uh-huh. okay um so yeah it's that's it they've got to like win nola if they want that number one seed for the land league yeah i, I mean with optic we've always said like especially on a desk you have to make the series just go longer as soon as they get on a roll as soon as they start winning all of the early gunfights the game is just it gets out of hand super fast, and that's what you see with TK. That's what you see with Splice. The, they put the pressure on Optic. They they make it go five game series. Like you want to do that as much as possible. Obviously, when Splice and and TK can three zero them, great. But those other teams, like one issue last year with the United, why they it, they were continuously a thorn in Optic's side was because they would make the series go to game five. Like and it doesn't matter when you once you get to a game five, it just comes down to that search and destroy. And that put that's so many different situations. Um, but the one thing I'll say about TK and I, I think Tyler can speak to this as well. Uh, I'm sure Jack t- can, too, after his continuous success on World War Two. Uh, <laughs> once once you're winning, like after a match, there isn't much. What can we do differently? Uh, obviously, you're still trying to change things up, fix mistakes, but. Everything is calm, cool, and collected. You're the guy at the top. Everything that you thought would, would would work, works. Because when you're losing, you constantly have to pick at one another. You have to change this up. This wasn't the right play. What they're doing now, it's successful. They don't have to change anything. The pressure's not on them. So their practice tendencies are obviously working. I mean, it's great. Their teamwork's amazing. Their search and destroy strategies are great. Maybe they have a weak map where in the veto process, they might try to change that for New Orleans. But for what we saw at at uh, at Dallas was they don't mind playing Gibraltar Hardpoint. They don't mind playing Forest. I, I know for the most part, they try to get rid of a, a London CTF and London Hardpoint. But you just saw last night, yes, it was online, but they can win I, those. Just up I, and down, yeah. they're super well polished. Mm-hmm. TK, TK are good at every... Are well prepared and look good in every single map and game mode combination, and yep. that is more than every other team. We know that they had their their veto kind of plan going into the event, which was do not ever play London Docks. They, they are again. This goes back to what I said earlier. They're doing whatever it takes to win. They're making sure they give themselves every advantage possible. And that's the crazy part. They yeah. just took two London Docks respawns against Optic online last night. Like it, yep. and that's their veto. Yeah. That's, that shows how deep of a map pool that they have right now and if you when you watch tk play they never look uncomfortable they they're, they run a lot of stuns they make the other team change to like armored classics th- things like that that they don't want to take away the speed so they don't have the airborne classes to work with they they just well-oiled machine very well prepared the practice is yeah. going well and they know how good they are now yeah so uh, they win that one 3-0. TK continues uh, the winning, uh, you know, sort of tendencies. I'm excited to see how they continue to develop. I could see. Let me ask you guys this question, right? You just <laughs> oh, last year, huh? I'm dying. I'm okay. Oh, don't die, please don't die. Actually, uh, I'm gonna save it for the end. Let's get okay. through the rest of this stuff. I'm gonna save it for the end. Uh, I have a question for us all. Um, let's go to the EU 2K. Um, ah, dude. EU online is just weird, man. Super like, weird. It, it's just weird. I, I don't know what it is, but it's just things are different. Splice loses to uh, they lose to dedicated servers. LOL. That is Endora, Sambi, Kreza, and Cami. Sure. Um, that team loses to Infused. Infused beats Overtime, which is like, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Johansson, Jeff Kidd, Dens, Neva. We've talked about them slightly. Uh, but Infuse gets to the finals. On the bottom side, Vitality. They make a pretty good run. They beat Supremacy. They beat Millennium. They end up losing to Red Reserve. Red Reserve, uh, they beat Excel. They beat Vitality. And then in your grand final, Infused beat Red Reserve in like a game five. And I think what happened was uh, they had to like replay around 11 due to a disconnect. And then Infuse won that round 11. So, um, but yeah, EU, 2Ks, I don't know, man. They don't add up. 
to me, the best teams in, in Europe are still Splice and Red Reserve. That like below that pack, yeah. like we can. Yeah, it's just like there's nobody really else right now. I still want to see more from that Unilad lineup. Uh, Epsilon, I'm still not sure what to think of them. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that roster, but I don't know. EU, it just seems to be splices here, red yeah. reserves like here, and then everybody else is just under them. Right now, if you were like, pick four players to represent your region in the world games, you would just send splice. Like you wouldn't send, a, you wouldn't pick a player off another team. You would just send splice for Europe, like to represent. They yeah. are far and away the best team. They are the hope for Europe this year. I, I, I don't even think right now it's 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 it, there's no argument to be had. Yep. Yeah, I I have some hope for Red Reserve though. Uh, there's been yeah. glimpses of gameplay from them where they show that they belong in the top tier of Call of Duty. You know, especially at Dallas. Uh, I think Raided's been really really solid in that that AR role. Uh, I need to see more gameplay, though. I guess I'll have a way better opinion of Red when we go to NOLA and if they can get another, well, they get at Dallas, 9 through 12. So if they yep. can have another performance like that, that's solid, and I'll put a lot more stock into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think with the Red team, it just seems like uh, they're just uh, another one of those teams. And I think it's really just the people on that uh, on the team. When things are going well, they're going really well. Like I, I talked about it at Dallas with Zero. Obviously, when when he was one of the best players in the world last year with Splice, they won an event. As soon as that went away, you saw it stage two. Like as soon as he wasn't into into his rhythm, it affected everyone else. And I I see a lot of that with this team. Like when they're winning, they're gonna win a lot. But when they lose, they they're they're just gonna lose, man. So there's a lot of emotion, raw emotion on that team. All right. Um, I mean, we discussed pro point standings for, for a minute, but if you want to pull those up, Tyler, yep. you, you can really Pop quick. them up real quick. Pro point standings for the final time. Yeah, so uh, I think the big thing is in NA. Riser obviously taking over that 10th seed. Um, E6 is 11. Behind them, you have Lightning Panda, EG, Ghost. I mean, Ghost is still there. They're <laughs> at 26,000 uh, with how poor they, they have been performing. Um, again, we, we touched on that a lot. Uh, e United or not e United Europe Splice is Splice and Red are, are number one and number two. Behind them, you have a lot. You have Vitality, Unilad, Epsilon, Infuse, Millennium, and Excel. Um, so that obviously stops at Epsilon. Infuse is like four thousand behind them. Millennium nine thousand. Do you see? I, I guess we'll ask the same question. If there was a team to choke a, a pro league spot in Europe, who would it be? It, it, do you guys just Ooh. point and choose at Epsilon? I. Mm. I just have less faith in Vitality. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I mean, I know we've had our, our 2K, stuff like that, yada, yada, and the team showed up a little bit, but I, I just can't get I, – I, I won't believe Vitality's in the league until I literally see Vitality in day one of the land league. And like, <laughs> I, I'm about to cast their match. That's, how, that's to, sit, to put it simply. That's just how it is. Yeah. Again, no, I, I would say they have two, two more online 2Ks in Vitality – the past two have gotten top four twice. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Not I'll sure. How, yeah. I, I mean, I that. agree. It's like. Uh, Tyler, any any thoughts on EU? If I had to pick one to choke. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably pick Epsilon. Epsilon? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure what to think of this team yet. Um. I saw people saying they don't practice that much or, or something. I, I don't I don't know. I don't have a scout in Europe, so yeah. couldn't tell you. Uh, but, yeah, um, that's basically it for, for the stuff we're going to cover. Now we can do the, the Q&A. Okay. I have some questions. I'm okay. going to I'm gonna ask the first couple. The go, first yeah, one go I'm going to ask is to you two. If the FG meta goes away, how does that affect TK? Hmm. I think they're going to be just fine. Yeah? I think they're going to be just fine. I feel like they obviously look so well prepared. Their their map pool super deep. They veto a map that I think they're honestly fine at, which is impressive to say the least, just to put other teams... They're, it's like they're thinking two steps ahead. Their team play is just fine. Uh, I don't think they'll have any sort of issue. I, I think overall... Chino and Accuracy's KD might come down a little bit, as expected. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like Kenny's would just go up that little bit more. 
Okay. So I, I don't. <laughs> a lot, a lot I think it'd be just fine. If if the FG goes away, then what's the next best? Is it the bar again? Uh, yeah, uh, that's the all. Like, are we assuming what, bar, the bar comes back in? I, I I'm just saying, right? Because there's a lot of people who are like, dude, the FG is way too good. Um, I mean, we saw it last year with Rise. I mean, as silly as it is with the Osa, I figured I'd ask if you guys had any thought on it. But I I agree with Tyler. I think just up and down how polished they they are. I I think they'd just be fine. Yeah. Sure. I agree. Yeah. All right. Next one I had is, and we touched on it briefly. How successful do you guys think the old Envy roster, and old by I mean Jacob, John, Apathy, and Slasher, how good would they be in this game? I think they'd be amazing. I, I, I think they would be absolutely amazing. What was the weakest part of their gameplay in IW? Or weakest player? That's an obvious one. I mean, Cap, yeah. How is Cap looking this game? Just, just fine. Just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> yeah. So, hmm, has John looked extre- has looked extremely strong, so they're fine there. And then Apathy would be in a much more comfortable situation than he probably would have been on his lineup right now on AG. Yeah, I mean, App would be the biggest question mark to me because we still haven't seen him perform, you know, obviously to the level that we know he can. Um, I, I think, again, you have Slasher on that team, and Slasher's been an absolute beast, so... I, I wish we could. I wish we could have seen. I think that, they'd be so good. Roster. I just, I can't believe it. I still can't believe they made that change. I still can't believe that that all happened. That, the, the, okay, I would have believed it before they did way better at the last two events of IW that they were making that change. But then you get second at champs. I, I just don't see a world where you place top top two at champs and you make a change with the roster you've had. I yeah. know it's enticing to get their old team back, but if that old team. Like, like, let's say it's this scenario, right? Let's say it's this scenario where that old team coming back was originally a godly boots team, then yes. But that was originally a good jetpack team. Yeah, I they had a godly jetpack team. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> a godly jetpack team that could never beat Optic. And then now you put them in boots where I don't think that they're going to be better than they were as a jetpack team against a team in Optic that people think are going to be even better in boots. I just don't see where the thought process behind it. You... You essentially, Jack, you said this earlier, one of the worst, it potentially could be one of the worst roster moves ever. That, yeah. Like, it could have been one of the best rosters of all time, and you throw away yeah. that potential. If, yeah. It, doesn't every team change right now, I mean, am, am I wrong with this, that every team change in the last two and a half years of Call of Duty has been a team change to build a roster to beat Optic Gaming? Yeah. And with the team change happening for Envy going into boots, I just feel like, that was a team change to make a team change because Slasher missed his old friends. What if Rambo just text me? Um, Joe dropped my ass after getting second at champs on Envy, so technically they need another roster change and they'll win again. Yeah. Wow! Wow! That's true. Oh! <laughs> something in the chat. Riot Listen. or something. Listen. Listen. Nameless and study are going to leave, so that's all I would say. He knows that, too. He's just trying to be a punk. <laughs> yeah, he's being a punk for sure. Oh, well. Nothing you can do. I ended up with a great team. I won a few championships, Ray, go so bowl, I can't be bad. Ray, Just go bowl or something, okay? Yeah, you you eventually got formal. That was worth. Great play. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, happy birthday, formal. Uh, oh, yeah. Is- all right. Uh, let's take a few questions out of, out of the chat, and then because uh, this has been a lengthy one, and then yeah. we'll uh, head out. I said. Yeah, Go ahead and ask away, chat. Ask away. Questions. Um, oh, first one comes in from Mirak. He says, what does Twitch Prime do? On the- <laughs> uh, Twitch Prime, huh? Oh, Twitch Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the team being Mark! Yeah, Stop to these ch- Support hard points! Hard points next week, guys. Uh, well, next Monday is Christmas. E- or is Christmas. Yeah. Probably not not next week. Probably the week after. Yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't having hard points on Christmas Day? No. 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 <laughs> okay, we're not. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so there's a lot of questions. What do you – well, we touched a lot on the United. Hmm. <laughs> if – all right, if EG does bad, where do you see them going? To the open bracket. 
I guess de- that's the thing. It'd be a definite it, roster change. Yeah. Yeah. Y- you, you blow it up. The question is, what, which team, like, in this hypothetical world, where does apathy go? That starts the, the roster change, because I feel like... See so, the first one to go? You would think so. I, if you had to pick a, a quality sub player over a quality AR player in the current meta, you go after the better sub. Do you guys agree with that? I think you have to, right? Yeah, definitely. It, it, let's say they're both performing on the quote-unquote same level. It's not like... Yeah. Has any player on the team been a standout? So uh, you would assume Apathy would be one of the first ones to get poached. True. All right. Anything to say about that one, Jack? To the open uh, bracket, yeah. Sorry, I was still reading. Yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts. I was, I was reading for more questions in chat. I'm sorry, I'm being a bad You're guess. good. Um, all right, there's a lot coming in. Do you expect a ground zero roster change? They don't perform at New Orleans, probably. I imagine if because New Orleans yeah. again, guys. New Orleans yeah. is pro league. I mean, after that, we have the sixteen teams in pro league. Um, so yeah, I expect a ton of roster changes I, after I, that. Yeah, I, that's that. I think we have a, a baby little a baby roster mania. After that, after uh, yeah, let's do one more. Let's find a good one. Um. Phase is pretty comfortable in pro points for Unstoppable, who's asking. Uh, let's see. Hmm. We answered if Next Threat would make a, the, the Land League. Is no roster lock for National Circuit? No. All right, here we go. Is the first event a fluke for Optic Gaming? Mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, you guys start. I, I want to say this. Optic for me, I I was with, I think I was with some of the guys when it was announced that, or or I had, it was like, I was talking to them in some way that day when Map Vitos got announced that they would be back. And I know for a fact, Skump and the rest of that team were very, very happy to hear Map Vitos came back. Mm. At the end of the first event, one of my most disappointing points, parts of Optic was their decisions behind the, their map vetoes and selections. And it didn't care who they were facing. It was just, this is what we just don't want to play. And I think that it's something that they need to improve on that I think, again, with TP being now the coach of Optic will really help them. Um, Way to go, T. But yeah, I think See what that's I can do. One, right? Yeah, I think that that's one where it's just like, I feel like they just, they just, we're underprepared for some maps, um, and yes, they, they they lost to better teams uh, in the long run. And you know, Splice Splice finishes with an overall five and three map count versus Optic, uh, which is pretty good. You know, across two series, um, this is a team with vulnerabilities. This is a team that they have to have a good Nola if they want that first place spot, as we know. So we'll see if they can change things up to do it. I th- can they absolutely? But right now, this has been the least confident I think I've felt in the last two to two and a half years in optic winning an event. What? In regards, think, I mean, think of the last two years where they basically won every. I mean, I W I mean, rise wins United wins Atlanta going into Dallas. There was questions last year. I, I just think last year was obviously a, how, how much they're enjoying the game thing, how yeah. much they were, how much time and practice they were putting into it. But last year, I mean, we, we weren't too sure. Um, <laughs> For me, I've only had one time where I didn't pick Optic as my favorite to win an event, and right now I okay. don't know go into this as being as Optic be my favorite for for the next event. So it's only happened once in the last two two and a half years. For me. All right, I respect that. For me, they obviously win majority of the two Ks coming into Dallas. I think they were just riding the confidence that they had, the the comfortability on maps again. I mean, they were four and zero on Saint Marie, like going into the finals. I I don't know how you don't change that veto up i think if they change their vetoes up they fix some things and i'm sure coach tyler over here will i i think they will be fine but to consider it like a a fluke or anything i don't because i i think the competition at the top is is really really good tk is going to be tough to beat splice is going to be tough to to beat we know e united will will give them a good game they always do and then who's not to say that luminosity doesn't have the potential to beat them so i i think there's like Four to five teams that 
Optic has to understand they have to respect and they have to play their their map vetoes well. And if they do that and they they play at their potential level, they can they can win New Orleans. But I, I'm excited to see the adjustments they have going into that that event. Respect is the word, and that's yeah. the biggest priority. And it's respect in terms of gameplay, and it's respect in terms of vetoes. Yeah, they were on such a high of confidence, and what I mentioned when we had this talk before, and it leads them to have bad tendencies. They finally played teams that made them feel uncomfortable that made them slow down a little bit, that would two-piece them when they're running at them, and they weren't used to it, and they they didn't know how to react. So the biggest thing is that Optic's a very good team at establishing a lead on a map. The problem that mm-hmm. they're having, in my opinion, is they're not taking that lead and doing anything with it. They're playing the same sort of style, the same scrappy gameplay that opens up those doors for the other team to come back in. And, you know, I'm not saying play scared. I'm just showing, I'm just saying, show show a little bit of respect to players like Kenny that pop have popped a two piece on you 20 times in the past couple of series that you've played. You, you're, mm-hmm. you're getting, there's multiple times on a London docks hard point that I saw where they're getting broken from the front of the hill. And that speaks to me that they're just YOLO challenging whenever the hell that they want. They see a red dot on the map and they want to go challenge it because they're optic gaming and they'll probably win the gunfight. And I completely respect that fact, but it's boots on the ground boots on the ground. Cod is easier to win gunfights your positioning is way more important and they're not respecting other teams position enough so when you have leads in ctf for example is are you playing scared if you just sit there and hold middle statue on london dock ctf for the entire half i don't think it's playing scared at all you're making their most fast players frustrated they can't move on the map are you going to outgun formal or crim six if they're on fire heady or water steps heady ever I'd take that bet not like 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're pinned in the back of your base with Kenny flying at you, he's going to piece you. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's things like that that they need to slow it down and show respect to the other teams because they're good and they weren't ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, TB said everything I was about to say. <laughs> All right. Well, Jack, <laughs> you beautiful man, thank you for coming on today. Hey, we had a great hey. time. Hey, Jack, thank you so much for joining us, man. No. Chat, I want you to... Would you guys like to see Jack back eventually as a guest on Hard Points eventually? Hey, and if you you weren't sure, you can find Jack at twitch.tv slash CourageJD. Uh, you know, it's the middle of the month. It's around the 19th, and there's this thing called Twitch Prime. Uh, you can connect your uh, Amazon Prime account to it, and uh, hey. basically you could sub to anybody for free. Really what I'm saying is, you know, sub to Jack. And hey, T- can I quickly say something, please? <laughs> Because, no. you know what, I just need to get this off my chest. <laughs> my my uh, abnormally hairy chest. You want proof? Look at that, dude. Yeah. What the hell? All right. um, Perfect. I listen, got one, too. I want to thank... Good job, Joe. I want to yeah. thank everyone who supports Hard Points. Um, it's great that, you know, TP and, and Merck are here doing this week in and week out. Um, we don't have much of this in competitive Call of Duty. And they are pioneering the space. Um, so, props to you guys on leading this. Um, again... You know, this this is what it's all about. Talking COD day in and day out. Uh, this year is lit, and shows like this help make it more lit. So, can we get a can we get a heart spam in the chat for TP and Merck? Um, and I look forward to my fifty percent revenue cut for being on this episode. <laughs> we got you, absolutely. All right, I know. Teep. Well, I think uh, yeah. So next week, guys. Uh, obviously, nice Mondays, Christmas. We're not going to have too much content. No. Um, so, Teep and I will talk. Maybe a show like middle of the week. Probably not, though. So, looking at either the first or the second. Probably the second. Second. Because the first is New Year's Day. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll tweet that out. So, make sure to follow both our Twitters. Um, but, yeah. I hope everybody in the chat has a happy holidays. I- enjoy all your breaks. Your Christmas breaks. Your Happy freaking holidays. Your school breaks. Whatever it is, man. Yep. If work's giving you time time off, have fun, mm-hmm. a- a- enjoy enjoy is everything. Enjoy the family, enjoy the drinks, enjoy the Call of Duty, and and we're out. Teep, hit the ad button. Ad yeah. button. <laughs> <laughs> Run that three minute, baby. Run three minutes, that baby. Minute-er. Chat. Thank you so much. I'm hitting you guys with an ad. If you guys wouldn't mind sticking around and supporting the channel, thank you so much. We love you guys supporting the content. Thank you so much for the love on all the optic stuff today. I have a job again. I'm pretty excited about that. We're gonna keep hard points rolling for you. We'll, we're gonna. You know, just keep keep everything rolling. Simple as that.
ad break. Thanks for chilling with us, guys. Happy holidays. Hit that follow button as well. And this is when everybody who has ad block just looks at us. And now weird. it's just awkward. Like, hello, hello, ad blockers. Yeah. Just sitting.